Hello, hello, and welcome back, everyone, to Totally Women, the podcast that talks about everything women and nothing is off limits. I am your host, Rosemary Crosdale. I am a registered nurse and also an adult gerontology nurse practitioner. With this podcast, Totally Women, we will delve into health issues and disease processes that we deal with on a regular basis as women. And I will serve as your guide to provide you with updated information and also available resources that will help guide you through the process. I can't believe, ladies, that we're up to episode seven already. It's episode seven, my God. My sincerest gratitude to all my listeners who have been with me from the beginning until now. And I just want to welcome the new listeners as well. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey. I really, really, really appreciate you. And guys, we have a hallelujah moment. I don't know if you remember, but on episode six, my friend, Nicolin Barrett, she shared her story about her journey with breast cancer. I can report that as of October 31st, no cancer is showing in her right breast. So for that, we are extremely, extremely grateful. I just want to pause just to say a quick praise the Lord, a quick hallelujah, a quick thank you, Jesus. She still has to get scanned, you know, every six months. So as I go along, we'll keep you updated as she was one, you know, who was willing to share her journey with us. So guys, today, you know, this is episode seven. We are into the month of November. And this episode, I want to just touch on dealing with loss and grieving. You know, so many people are dealing with a loss, a loss of a parent, a loss of a child. You know, it could be a loss of a relationship. You know, it could be a divorce a miscarriage, so many different losses, a loss of a job, right? People are grieving in so many different ways. And on this episode, I just want to talk about what happens when you lose someone that has been a pivotal part of your relationship, you know, a pivotal part of your life who has been with you through thick and thin, and now that person is no longer there. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be a job. It could be something. And then you just go into grieving from losing something, right? Or from losing someone. And on today's episode, I haven't really, you know, gone into anything too personal about myself, but You know, I want to just share today a little bit about myself when it comes to loss and grieving, because this month of November, it's very significant for me. It's coming up on November 9th. Today is November 7th. So in about two days, it's going to be the 10th anniversary of when I lost my son. So yes, I had a son. His name was Andre Kareem Crosdale. And on November 9th of 2013, my son gained his wings. And for me, I must say that it completely changed my life, completely, completely changed my life. And don't get me wrong. I had experienced loss before in terms of, you know, I lost my grandparents. I've lost other people, you know, friends, relationships have gone, different things like that. And I was able to grieve and bounce back, right? And when I say bounce back, it's not like you bounce back and you forget because you never forget. This is something that is going to be with you. It's a part of you. So you never forget. But when I lost my son, it was as if my entire world just crumbled right in front of me. And every time, even around, you know, his birthday, you know, coming up on this anniversary, it still touches me in very, very different ways. And people are saying, you know, sometimes you talk to people and they're like, oh, it's 10 years already. You know, you should be in probably a better state than you were when it first happened. And 
I just want to say that on my personal journey, dealing with grief and the way I understand grief and just from me dealing with it is that grief is personal for each person, right? And how you deal with it and how you go about it is going to be also personal for you. And there are going to be moments when you're doing well. You're going to be, there are going to be moments when, you know, I think about all the good memories that I had with my son, you know, the trips we took, you know, how funny he was, how loving he was, you know, the hugs he used to give me. Those are the things that sometimes I'm able to wrap my arms around and they do comfort me, right? They comfort me to the point where I am able to just go on with my day and function as a person in society. And I'm able to go to work and do what I have to do. But then there, there are those other days, right? Especially, you know, when I get to be by myself. And sometimes I think about all of the other things and I'm like, oh my God. And I'll go into some dark places, you know, and it's by the grace of God that I must say that I'm still here. It's by the grace of God that I have what I call my village, right? That is around me, that has helped me through this process. I have my family, and a lot of times my family, they are very, very supportive. And I'm talking about my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my brother-in-law, my nephews. I have three amazing nephews. Isaiah and Jeremiah and little Kyrie, they wouldn't even understand how, you know, they contribute to just me when I see them and I look at them, it brings me to like a happy place, but every day is not like that. So just to give you a little background, my son, Andre, he had cerebral palsy. He was 19 years old at the time that he passed away. He had really bad seizures and, you know, he started having seizures and the seizures would not stop. No matter what they try to do, he was still just having seizures. So they had to put him like in a comatose state. He was on a ventilator. And I just kept thinking, you know, as a nurse and I'm looking at him, you know, also as my son, but also as my patient. Right. And I see where he's doing good. He has good vitals. His urine output is good and everything is good. So I'm thinking to myself, OK, he's doing fine. Right. And I really thought he was going to, you know, make a comeback and everything would have been fine. But, you know, that's not the way the story ends. And with the cerebral palsy as well, and cerebral palsy is one of those progressive diseases like, you know, he was very spastic. He was in a wheelchair. My son didn't talk. You know, he was nonverbal, but he was able to understand. And that's another thing. Like I would talk to him and he would understand what I was saying. And only a mom's, you know, the language. And I understood him as well. So... You know, I was his caretaker. I was, my entire life revolved around him. So when he was no longer around, it was, now what do I do? You don't just pick up the pieces and move on. It's not that easy sometimes, right? But gradually, and as the years progress, I've been able to pick up the pieces and I've been able to, you know, like even on today, I must say that I find myself in a better space. And it doesn't mean that, you know, his memory is not around or I'm still not grieving. And I think that sometimes what happens is that as mothers, especially, you know, when you lose a child, you think that if you're not constantly grieving or you're not in that grievous state, you know, all the time, it's like you're forgetting about your child or, you know, that memory is no longer there or it's, it's just weird. And it's weird of the things sometimes that we think I can't even, you know, put them into words. But sometimes it's like, you know, now that my son is not here, I was his caretaker. I was his caregiver. I was doing all of these things for him. And then now my life just seemed meaningless without him just to put it in that way. And I must confess that there were times when I didn't even see the need for me to be around, right? 
I know sometimes people look at me, I'm this like, you know, happy-go-lucky person and I'm smiling and stuff like that. But like I said, sometimes when I'm left alone and I'm by myself, that is when sometimes even in my head, let's say I'm thinking, did I do everything right by my son? You know, I'm thinking, oh my God. Because one of the things too, and I've, I've not shared this before, is that when we realized that my son was not doing well, one of the things that I had to do was to take him off of life support. And I think that that was one of the hardest thing. I'm, I'm sharing that now and even talking about it, it's bringing me back to that place again. And, you know, now I can say it out loud, but for years that thing tormented me because I said to myself, you know, maybe if I had left him on life support for a little bit, even though he was basically brain dead at that time, you know, nothing the machine was just working for him. So it's not like he was, you know, doing it for himself. So when I, when, when I did that and just living with that and every time that would come back to me, it would come up in my mind. It, it, you know, it would be some of the thoughts that I would be thinking and I would be saying to myself, Oh my God, what if you did the wrong thing? And, you know, I thank God for my sister because my sister, she is also a nurse and she works in palliative care. And she was such a big support during this time for me as well to reassure me and to let me know that whatever you did, even though at the time I could not see it. And even though sometimes now I still even go back and question it, guys, it's 10 years later and you still have these thoughts that come into your head, the what ifs, right? But one of the things that has kept me and separate from the memories and all the things that, you know, I so lovingly shared with my son, separate from all of that is my faith. And I must say that, you know, one of, I, I had a dream one time about my son and, you know, it was an amazing dream and it just, you know, it made me believe in heaven and it made me believe that God is real, right? And I experienced that for myself. And so nobody can tell me anything, right? Because when my son transitioned and even me just seeing him in a dream and he's telling me in his dream that the place where he is right now is such an amazing place. Remember, he didn't talk. But now he, this is what he was saying to me. And that just gave me such peace and reassurance to believe that. So even when I would reach to those dark places, right? Like I wanted to drive my car off the 59th Street Bridge, for example. That's what brought me back because I said to myself at some point, later on at some point, right? I'm going to definitely see my son again. And that's that reassurance that I live with. So that has comforted me and that has kept me. So, you know, I want to encourage moms out there. We see now sometimes, you know, with social media, a lot of celebrities, right? We see people because their lives are out there in the open and we see where, you know, they've lost their loved ones and, you know, they're sharing also. Some of them are sharing and some of them are not sharing. And we don't have that platform because, you know, we're just regular everyday people. But I see sometimes people put stuff on the Facebook reels and you see moms you know, and they're telling you about how they're coping and what they're doing to honor their sons or to honor their daughters or to honor their moms or their dads or who, you know, a niece or a nephew, you know, a godparent, someone who they have lost and, you know, ways that they're using to cope and ways that they're using to honor them. For some reason last night, I don't know this lady, they, she's referred to as Mama Tot. And she lost her son as well. And I saw yesterday, I was just watching this reel and someone sent this box to her where, you know, they had lost their child as well. And the lady had left this box at the cemetery and she kept writing notes to her son. And then other people would visit and they would also put a note in there. And when she went back, she found it. And, you know, when she read the notes and how her child meant to other people, what, you know, based on the notes that they were leaving, it kind of just comforted her. And Mama Tata was saying how, you know, it was such a good gift that she had received from someone. And, you know, she was just, it, how it comforted her also in her time of loss. 
so many people and so many people are able to make it. Some people, you know, they can't deal with the stress, you know, when they go to some dark places and maybe they can't deal with all the emotions and everything because this is not an easy journey. It's not something that you just come into and then it just passes away, right? This is something that is going to be ongoing. And I know that, you know, the memory of my son will be with me until the day that I go it will always be with me, but I had to learn some strategies to help me to cope with the grieving because it, it became so overwhelming. There were times when I would just drive myself to the cemetery. I still go to the cemetery. I may not go as often as I used to, but I still go. And I still go, even though I know that my son, his, his physical body is not there. He's with the Lord, but at the same time, that's the last place that I remember burying him. So when I go there, it also allows me to, even though I could talk to him right here and right now, but when I go to the cemetery, I still am able to just like talk to him as well, you know? So people do different things to help them to cope. If going to the cemetery helps you, go to the cemetery. Don't let anybody take that away from you because everybody will deal with grieving in their own way. The thing is, grieving can also become toxic, right? It can become toxic. And when I say toxic, I mean toxic for you, the person who is left back to grieve, right? And toxic for you where you can't cope no matter what you do and you cannot cope. You can't get your life back together. You can't see a way out, even though you know that this person is not going to be coming back. It's like your life has just taken such a turn that you can't see any way out. I want to encourage you to seek out therapy. Therapy has helped me. You know, I, I did grief counseling. And, and of course, sometimes you say to yourself, who want to sit there listening to a bunch of people just talking about grieving and whatever? I just want my child back, right? In your eyes, that's what you're looking at it. But sometimes when you're sitting with like people who have gone through some of the things that you have gone through or even worse, because sometimes... When you hear of some of the moms, right, or some of the dads and some of the aunties and the godparents or, or whoever, sisters, brothers, when they express themselves and they tell you sometimes even how their loved ones transitioned, you're saying to yourself, oh, my God, I can't even imagine how they're still here. And so, you know, you're here in that setting and it helps because you're encouraging each other. Right. But also therapy for yourself alone. Right. Self-care, certain things that you have to do for yourself as well, just so that you can make it in this world. Your family and your loved one, they're not coming back. Right. And you're left now. And, you know, like I said, with the holidays coming, it's going to be so hard because even if we didn't do anything else during the rest of the year, the holidays are a time when we usually gather, right? I'm just going to encourage us as women, encourage us as moms, even if your child is no longer here. Some of you may have other children and it doesn't mean because people ask me that all the time. Do you have other kids? One child doesn't take the place of another, it doesn't matter. You could have 10 children and you lose one. It doesn't take the place of another. The only thing is that now you have to be present for the other children that you have because now you have to be there to support them, right? And to be there for them. So in that case, now you have to like step up to the plate. It brings you to that where you have to step up to the plate a little bit faster than someone like in my situation who that was just my only child. But it still bring you, you're still grieving. You know, you go to bed and you still can't sleep or, you know, you're going through things, you're driving and that's all you can think about. You're taking the train, you're sitting, you know, and you realize that you can't even focus to do the things that you want to do. And I just want to encourage you, encourage you that, you know, grieving does not have to be something that is going to be unhealthy. It can be healthy as well. And I do want you to know that you need to grieve. You, If you feel like crying, cry. Yeah. 
I, I definitely can say that if you feel like crying, you have to cry, right? Sometimes even just writing a letter, journaling, there's so many things, you know, that will help you, you know, just writing down your thoughts and stuff like that. These are things that can help you. Sometimes like I have albums of my son, you know, so many pictures in the nineties when my son was born in 1994, we had like cameras and disposable cameras. And it's not like now, you know, where you took pictures, but of course we used to take pictures and stuff like that. My brother, he was the one who would, he took so many pictures. My sister, she loves taking pictures. So sometimes they'll just send a picture and you'll be like, oh, where did that picture come from? And it just warms your heart, you know? So go back and, you know, treasure these things, but don't let these things become like an idol then because that person is not there anymore. Or you can idolize how you look at them and the coping is just not there. You can't cope. It's become like you, you have this shrine then that you put and you just idolize it, you know, and you're just like, listen, this is what it is and whatever. And I'm saying you can have that memory around my apartment in my house. I still have you know, my son pictures. I look at them all the time, pictures with me and him and stuff like that. I still do have those things. I have stuff that he had from wheelchair soccer and stuff like that. I have, you know, trophies that they would give out and stuff when, you know, that they had with his program that he was involved in. So I still have some of those stuff. And those are memorabilia that you keep. And, you know, these are things that you have and you hold on to. And they, they help to warm your heart because there are times when you go back and you look and it just, you know, that memory that is going to still be there. But the place that you carry the memory the most is in your heart. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my son, right? So, you know, for those of you out there who are grieving, right? You're, you're, you're grieving the loss of your mom. You're grieving the loss of your dad, a brother, a sister, an uncle. I mean, it was a couple of months ago, we just went to Jamaica to bury my uncle. So just grieving like, you know, in those ways, and you're still grieving, you know, my dad is grieving his brother, right? So people are grieving in so many different ways. And like I said, it could be a job. You've been on this job for a while and now you've lost your job and you're grieving a job. But understand that the job that you lost is not the job that defined you. And now you're going to move on and you're going to get yourself back together. And sometimes it takes a little time to pull yourself back together, right? Sometimes you have to look into the mirror and you have to encourage yourself because at the end of the day, when everyone is gone, it's just you that are that is left with your thoughts and with your emotions, right? And we can either allow these thoughts and emotions to overpower us to the point where we're stuck or we're stagnant because that was my journey. I was stuck and stagnant for so long, right? You know, even just starting this podcast, this podcast has been a blessing for me and it, it's been in my heart for so long. And, you know, I really want to thank GSD. She was the one who pointed me into the direction and I met this wonderful producer and, you know, he was the one who also, even we had gotten started and we didn't even start because I kept putting it off. But, you know, this is something that I've wanted to do for so long and I've been talking about it, you know, and I felt like I was groomed for it. You don't even know how your calling is going to come into effect. And I do believe that this is a part of my calling. Yes, I'm a nurse and I love nursing and I love being a nurse practitioner, but I feel also that just talking to women and encouraging us is just a part of my makeup and I couldn't have been doing anything else. So this platform that I'm able to share, I really don't take it for granted. So ladies, and you know, I'm going to say gentlemen as well, because all of us, and sometimes the men grieve differently because, you know, they are taught to be tough. And, you know, sometimes even when we will shed a tear, the guys probably won't cry, but I must say that we, I want to encourage everyone you know, whatever kind of loss you're experiencing, whether it's the loss of a child, it's the loss of a parent, it's the loss of a sister, it's the loss of a brother, it's the loss of an auntie or an uncle, it's the loss of a friend, it's the loss of a pet. Some of you have had a pet for years, the family pet, and now they're no longer around. You're grieving for that reason. OK, so whatever loss you're going to, I'm just going to tell you that there is better. 
and it does get better and there are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days, but you have to celebrate the good days. Try to celebrate the good days. Have a heart of thanksgiving. Be very thankful. Be very grateful. Have gratitude. Do something. Volunteer somewhere. You know, if you were a mom or, you know, even at your child's school or something like that, if they're older, do something in their memory. What I did, I created the Andre Kareem Scholarship Fund in the name of my son just to have something. And it's been so far we've been able to, you know, give back to high school students or transition into college. And that just warms my heart as well. So having that in the name of my son, it allowed me to grieve in a different way, in a positive way, as it were. And I just want to encourage everyone, encourage you now in the holidays. We're living in some serious times, right? We're living in times when we don't know what's going on with each other. People are suffering in so many different ways. And I just want to say, check on your neighbors, check on other people. If you have Thanksgiving dinner and you know of somebody who don't, maybe you can volunteer at a soup kitchen. My my church has the the Hope Center where they vol where they have they need volunteers sometimes to just serve the community and serve food, you know, and give out food like that. There are so many food banks that are around if you want to do something positive for the holidays, you know, or to give back in some way. Just do something with gratitude because guess what? You're still here. And you're here in the land of the living, you're awake, you're alive, and it's a new day. And I just want to encourage you, yes, there are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days, but just celebrate each day as you go along. And don't let the grieving allow you to become stuck are stagnant, where you cannot move around and do what you're supposed to do to have a productive life because you're still here. And your family members, I know my son don't want me to just sit down and just be like, you know, be every day just like, you know, in a, in a state where I can't move along. I know he wants me to be happy. And your family member also wants you to be happy. So I just want to encourage you all today to continue to share and encourage each other. If you know someone who is going through a loss, maybe sometimes it's even just picking up the phone, just checking on each other. How are you doing? I heard that, you know, someone passed away. Can I do anything for you? Maybe you can just even buy some fruit or something and just drop off if you know where they live. Just something, just do something nice for someone, you know, just to show gratitude. And that will just warm your heart and make you just feel so much better. So today I'm holding back tears right now because I feel, <laughs> I feel them coming, but it's, it's good tears and it's good. And sometimes, like I said, it's good to just express yourself because tears are a language, right? Tears are a language that God understands. And sometimes all you can do is just cry to express yourself. And that's fine because sometimes that's what you have to do, right? But when you're finished crying, Wipe your tears away and look at yourself and just say, you've got this because you've got this. And I just want to encourage you. I want to thank you today for allowing me just to bring a little personal part of me and sharing with you. You know, like I said, it's going to be 10 years on November 9th. So, you know, and people think that the longer the years are, the grieving gets less. And sometimes that is not true. But I want you to just deal with the grief in a positive way. If you need to get therapy, and I do encourage therapy, I can't stress it enough, are resources that are available that if you need to talk to someone, that you can open up and talk to someone. Because sometimes when you hold everything back in, that's why sometimes it's good to cry. Because when you cry, it's like just the floodgates just open and you're able to just release everything. So that's like a good thing for you. So I just want to encourage the women of Totally Women just to be kind to someone, especially around the holiday seasons coming up right now. Be kind right? Be kind to each other. Love on someone. If you know that someone, you know, is missing someone or a loved one, you're the family member, even a card, just something just to express, you know, and let them just feel like appreciated. Just some words of encouragement. And you don't know how far that can go to help someone to cope 
during their time of loss. And like I said, loss comes in different shapes. They come in different sizes. And my grieving process is going to be different from yours. So you're going to grieve accordingly. But whatever you do, try not to let it get you down to the point where you cannot perform, right? Because that's when it becomes not good right? When you cannot perform and you cannot get out of bed and now depression comes in, try not to isolate yourself. That's what the devil wants, but the devil is a liar. Don't isolate yourself. Try to be around other people. And I have to say that too, because I, I tend to do that. I tend to lock off and not want to be around, but try to be around other people and, and just encourage yourself. So like I said, I just want to thank you again. Thank you to everyone. Thank you again for all of your support. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, you know, for allowing me to share this uh, journey with you. And I just wish you all the best. You know, if you're if you're experiencing a loss and, you know, everything, it will get better. It, it may not look that way right now, but it will get better sometime. And, 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 and I've, you know, they say time heals all wounds. I don't think it healed, it necessarily heal all the wounds, but it allows it to get better to the point now where you're able to cope with it a little bit differently. And I must say that, you know, where I was before compared to now, it's a totally different place, right? And it's not like I've forgotten or the memories are not there, but it's a totally different place that I find myself. And the place that I find myself in right now, where I still can cry and I still can grieve, but at the same time, it's, 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 I'm doing it in a more positive way. And yes, I'm still a work in process. I'm still in therapy. You know, therapy is ongoing, you know, so I just want to encourage you and, you know, encourage everyone. So totally women, you know, like I always say, inspire, uplift and motivate each other. Okay. Especially around this time, this holiday season, be a blessing to someone. If you, if your table is full, share, share with someone, teach your kids to also share, right? And be kind to each other. Thank you again and have just an awesome day.